Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing great. In this video, we are going to find out Miller indices as well as Miller privacy indices for various directions in FCP. Um, this is actually a part 2 of a video in which we considered this problem statement that you can see on the screen. The problem statement says here you can see that obtain the Miller index, M index means the Miller index and MB index which means the Miller Bravis indices. So this problem says to find out Miller indices as well as Miller Bravis indices for the phase and directions shown in the figure. Now phase means plane. So in part one of the video, I uh, calculated Miller indices as well as Miller Bravis indices for three of the planes that are shown in the figure by the gray shading. Okay, this gray shaded area is actually the plane whose Miller indices and Miller Bravis indices are needed to be calculated. So, um, in part one of the video, I calculated M and MB index for three of the planes that are shown here for HCP. The second part of the problem says that find out the direction indices as well, okay, Miller indices as well as Miller Bravis indices for the six directions which are shown by these vectors A, B, B, C, D, E, E, F, G, O and O, K. Each figure has two directions whose indices needs to be calculated, okay, so a total of six directions are there um, first is a b direction this is the vertex a and this is the vertex b actually the direction is drawn in the figure and the vectors are also shown but the vector the arrow is so tiny that you can hardly see it so i in previous part of the video uh, shown you people that how these directions could be drawn so a b direction could be drawn uh, in a way that for example if we have a b direction the first alphabet is a so directions tail will be at point a and head will be at the point b okay so the first element or alphabet in order uh, shows the tail of the direction and the second uh, alphabet shows the head of the vector starting from point a and drawing a straight line towards the point B and the vector head would be at point B. So this is the direction AB. Then we have BC direction and in a similar way you can draw the BC direction. I am showing you this method to draw a direction because sometimes um, actually the real direction is not shown and only uh, the symbolic representation is mentioned so you can easily draw it uh, by knowing this fact that the tail will be at the first alphabet okay representing it this is B here in second direction case so starting from B and its uh, head will be at the point C so this is the second direction whose indices needs to be calculated and similarly we can draw these vectors for DE E, F, G, O, and O, K. Um, I'll do this offline, okay, to save time. And after that, we'll find out these indices one by one because for direction indices, the method is quite different from the one that we use for plane indices, okay. In order to find out the Miller Bravis indices for planes, uh, the method is completely different, while in case of direction, the method is completely different. <laughs> practice it as much as possible uh, so that you may people do not find it difficult um, sometimes students get confused that what method to adopt while finding out the indices for planes and directions and they confuse both of these methods so practice it so that you may not get confused so here you can see these directions now there is a difference between uh, saying a vector or saying a direction. Direction is just direction. It, magnitude is not relevant. While in case of vector, both magnitude and direction are relevant. So first of all, you will find all Miller indices for the direction A, B and B, C. And after finding out the Miller indices, we will find out the Miller Bravis indices. And do remember that in order to find out Miller Bravis indices, you always have to find out 
Miller indices first, no matter what. Okay, so um, if the question of finding out Miller Bravis indices alone comes, then that doesn't mean that you do not have to find out Miller indices. Okay, we first need to find out Miller indices for the directions, and then we can find out Miller Bravis indices from certain equations that we have established. Uh, as a relationship between the Miller indices and Miller Bravis indices. Okay, so that relationship is um, calculated based on some, you know, uh, assumptions. So um, let's say the Miller indices are H, K, and L. Okay, Miller indices are always three in number, and for directions. They are enclosed in square brackets as shown here while in case of planes we enclose them in circular brackets or round brackets so in case of uh, directions we use square brackets while if Miller indices are H K and L then Miller Bravis indices will be represented by by the corresponding prime members okay H prime K prime I'll tell you that how and which coordinate will determine which of these index i prime and l prime okay you can use your own notation the one that you your professor is using or your, or your book is referring to for example in some books we have u v w t um, and u v u prime w prime and t prime as the miller indices while u v w t as miller bravis indices so it's all up to you it's optional and it's arbitrary it doesn't affect your original values so it it's your choice okay this is the only thing that you have you know <laughs> choice you can choose your own notation or the one that you find easy so H, K, and L will be our Miller indices, while H prime, K prime, I prime, and L prime will be Miller Bravis indices. Uh, they will be four uh, axis lines. One will be called uh, called as A1, the other two as A2 axis. The third one will be A3 axis, and the last one will be Z axis. While in case of cubes. In other coordinate systems, we have x, y, and z axis. While in case of hexagonal crystal system, we use 4D coordinate system, in which a1 axis, a2 axis, a3 axis, and z axis are the coordinate axis that we choose. Okay, and from the figure, you can easily see that this is the origin. Okay, this centermost point is always origin, and this vector or this axis is a1 axis then leaving this corner untouched the one on which i just created that big dot okay now this one leaving this one corner untouched the next corner in order will correspond to the positive a2 direction so this is the a2 axis then leaving the third corner which is represented by that symbol c here untouched we uh, take the fourth corner here it will be because of plane they have not shown it but we know that there is a dot here and if we join this then we get a3 axis here so these three axis lines a1 a2 and a3 are lying on the basal plane or on the base of the hexagonal system okay so these three axis line lies on the base while the fourth axis which is the z axis and it points vertically upward and um, this is this direction this vertically upward direction it's a straight vector okay is the z axis so we have four axis here a1 a2 and a3 and z axis in finding out while finding out miller indices okay we'll consider only three axes first and these three axes will be a1 a2 and z axis always okay we'll neglect a3 axis we'll treat it as if a3 axis doesn't exist okay and we'll ha and we have to find out all the coordinates uh, for the tail and the 
head of direction uh, whose miller indices needs to be determined so we'll find out the coordinates of the tail and head i'll tell you the steps after that um, taken into account a2 a1 and z directions only and we have to neglect a3 direction that means movement along a3 axis is not allowed okay so that rule is a uh, compulsory rule okay and you have to follow it no matter what so after finding out uh, coordinates we'll perform some of the operations on it and after that we'll get uh, the indices corresponding to a1 uh, coordinates and after performing the operations we'll get h index h it's h h but i will use it after performing operations on A2, you will get the second index which is K. And after performing operations on Z, you will get the third index which is L. Okay, so you will get H, K and L which are the Miller indices. Um, okay, corresponding to these axis lines and similarly from H you will get H prime after performing some operations and corresponding to k you will get you will get k prime corresponding to a3 you will get i prime okay and corresponding to l you will get l prime so now you know that which coordinates or which axis lines will give us which of the index so the first index in miller indices is for a1 second is for a2 third is for z in miller brevis indices first is for a1 second is for a2 third is always for a3 and fourth is always for z so this order matters and you have to um, write down those indices okay in that order index for a1 first index for a2 second index for a3 third if it is miller brevis indices otherwise not and then index for z axis so this is how these indices will work now let us write down those steps to follow steps first of all you have to define your coordinate system and coordinate axis lines for example which we have already done in our case in case of plane you have to make sure that the that the plane doesn't pass through the origin of the coordinate system that you have defined so, uh, so in case of planes you have some restriction while in case of directions you do not have any res restrictions and you can choose any coordinate system that you feel is easy for your direction okay that is mentioned here so it's totally up to you we have already defined our coordinate system with origin at the center point okay and secondly the second step is to find out coordinates of tail of your direction okay the direction that is given for example in case of a b we have tail at a and head at b uh, so in case of a b for example in case of a b find coordinates of a first okay then you have to find out the coordinates of head of your direction and find coordinates of head head of your direction so which is at B in case of AB direction okay and after finding out uh, these things you have to subtract the corresponding coordinates in order like head coordinates minus tail coordinates particular axis line minus tail coordinates okay 
for example if you are considering a1 direction so a1 component of head head point minus a1 component of tail uh, point so you will see it and you will understand it very easily so after subtraction the values that you will get uh, if you get integer values for example if, if no fraction occurs that's the better word if no fraction results then the integer numbers you get that could be positive or negative okay uh, but they will be a whole number or whole integers for example 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and up to so on but they will not have any fractions for example 1 over 2 3 by 5 3 by 25 so no uh, fractions a fractional miller indices doesn't exist that is why we remove fractions if we have any and we remove those fractions by multiplying um, LCM of denominators by each of the um, quantity that we have got so after multiplying those quantities and removing the fraction the numbers we get the integers we get are the final Miller indices final Miller indices enclosed in square brackets written in that order that I told you people earlier so these are the steps that we have to follow while finding out the Miller indices and after finding out the Miller indices we'll see the procedure to to find out the Miller Bravis indices okay and we'll do it step by step now let's find our Miller indices for a B direction and we now know these steps and I'm putting them aside so that we can focus on what's you know next and this is a b direction okay and this is a which is the tail and this is the point b which is the head and we have to find out their coordinates taking into account a1 a2 and z axis only now keep that in mind that this point is this one point okay this one point which is point b is corresponding to a1 positive direction so a corner just opposite to that is the co the point c it will correspond to the negative a1 direction okay to keep in mind the negative directions and this this was the positive a2 direction and this will be the negative a2 direction these are some important uh, points to consider okay so yeah now let's find out the head coordinates and for that purpose finding out coordinates mean that what path along a1 a2 and z axis you have to follow okay what movements you have to follow in order to reach that point so what could be the shortest route to go there and keep that in mind movement along a3 direction is not allowed so what I will do is starting from origin it will always start from origin I will move one unit one unit means to the other corner of the unit cell so I will move one unit to the other corner of the unit cell along which direction negative a2 direction so in a negative a2 direction or I will say in a2 direction I traveled minus one unit minus corresponds to the negative direction okay so yeah I travel minus one units along a2 direction and from this point uh, onward I'll have to move one unit along z direction one unit mean to the other corner of the unit cell and point a is the other corner of the unit cell okay I have to move one unit along positive z direction to reach point a so in z direction I have to move positive one unit and a1 direction I didn't have to move I didn't need to move any units so it will be taken as zero for a1 direction so you can see here 
the coordinates of point A is 0, minus 1 and 1. Alright, A was the tail, A, B direction and the tail coordinates are 0, minus 1 and 1. Now let me clear one more thing to you people that there are other paths also to follow and we all don't just jump into the right path all at once. We often go for the ones that we shouldn't take. For example, there is a path for example like this that I can move one unit along, pos one positive unit along A1 direction for example then I will move one unit along this direction okay and after that I can move one unit along Z direction to reach the point A that was another path that was possible but what is the problem with that path is that though this direction this one I hope you can see uh, was positive A is along A1 direction and that is permissible but uh, this motion this one motion onwards was not was along it was along a3 direction which is not permissible okay it is not permissible at all as I, as I told you people that movement along a3 is pro prohibited while finding out miller indices so that is why I didn't take that path to find out the uh, coordinates okay I took the path in which I have to move along a2, Z or A1 direction but not along A3 direction. So all paths that involve movement along movement along A3 direction also will be cancelled out and we have to shorten down to those paths that involve motion along A1, A2 and Z direction. So that was one of the example. Now let us find out the coordinates for B point which is super easy super 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 easy this is origin you always have to find out coordinates starting from origin this is origin to reach point b you have to move one unit along a1 direction simply that's all you need to move you do not need to move along a2 direction or z direction so for our head this was tail these are the tail coordinates and we have the head coordinates okay for along a1 direction I had to move one unit positive one unit because it was positive direction and along a2 I need to move zero units and along z I need to move zero, zero units okay you must understand how the coordinate system is established okay how positive directions are uh, drawn you first draw positive directions and then you extend them in opposite direction to find out the negative directions okay to understand these things they will help you a lot while you know solving it because in exam you often get the unseen questions and you have to be prepared for them and for that purpose you should <laughs> watch the videos that I have done before because they covered the foundational uh, knowledge the foundational concepts if I put all those detail again and again in every video that I am uploading then it will become too much lengthy because they these videos are already one hour and you know one hour plus uh, lengthy videos so it's not possible for me to upload so much concentrated content all in one video so I recommend you people if you want some extra foundational uh, knowledge then do watch those videos on HCP that I have uploaded before I will link those videos in comment section okay I will pin those so do check them out if you need that extra thing extra help extra guidance and then do these practice problems so we have found the tail coordinates and head coordinates for uh, all three axis lines now what we have to do is to subtract the head coordinates with the tail coordinates okay so the order matters head coordinate comes first minus the tail coordinate and let me put that text in some other position 
okay our direction that is a matter so that we can subtract for a1 let's say first of all we'll do it for a1 then we'll do it for a2 here and here we'll do for z the subtraction process okay you can write subtracting you can write that heading in your paper like subtracting head coordinates from tail coordinates okay you can write it as heading or the operation that you are going to perform you can write it okay then you will make the table and you in which you subtract so head coordinates h minus t keep that in mind so for a1 we have 1 minus 0 okay so 1 minus 0 what you will get is 1 so this is something that you get and for a2 you have 0 here and minus 1 here so 0 minus into minus 1 0 minus into minus 1 okay this minus 1 multiplies with this minus this this minus okay oh it looks like equal now he <laughs> he uh, you know that operation okay 0 minus into minus 1 these two minus uh, are multiplied with each other and it will become plus so we have 0 plus 1 left and 0 plus 1 is 1 all right for z head coordinates minus tail coordinates this is head which is 0 and this is tail which is 1 so head minus tail 0 minus 1 0 minus 1 is minus 1 so you got 1 1 and minus 1 as the final values and you can see that there is no fraction involved we do not have any fraction here so we do not need any further steps and these are the final Miller indices for a b direction okay and now we'll write them in square brackets to mention that yeah we have got a result okay we have officially got it so we'll write them you can mention the reason that since no fraction involved and these are the final Miller indices and we got H you can write it like that K L these are small letters okay square brackets because it's for directions and this is for a1 so it will give us h first is 1 then we'll write k which is obtained from a2 coordinates which is 1 here again so 1 1 then we have l and l is something that we'll get from z axis or z coordinates which is minus 1 and minus 1 is written as 1 with bar on it okay so these are the final Miller indices now let's find out Miller Bravis indices for a b direction there are some transformation equation or simple simply I would say some equation that you have to um, put values in and you will get the Miller Bravis indices now let's write those formulas you will get h prime is equals to its bracket 2 if we are finding h prime then we'll have 2h h is the Miller index minus k this whole thing 
divided by 3. This is h. Now if you want to find k prime, the formula is almost similar but we will replace. If you are finding k prime then we will have 2k minus h. You can see the formulas are almost similar divided by 3. Okay, now so 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 now next is L, which is very simple. L prime is equals to L. Okay, these indices are equal to each other you do not have to do anything on it and i prime is equals to negative of h prime plus k prime this relation was also used in in case of planes okay so first what you have to do is to find of h prime using this formula then find k prime using this formula and you can find out i prime by adding h prime and k prime that you got earlier and multiplying it with a negative sign so you will get i prime simply l equals l prime so l doesn't change in miller bravis indices miller indices and miller bravis indices z coordinate or z index remains the same while h k and i are different and this is the equation that you will follow we know the value of h k and l and we can simply find out h prime k prime and l prime um, based on this so let's do that now let's put the values into these equations and get our miller brevis indices so h prime is equal to H, H was 1 minus K, K was 1 also. You can see the Miller indices that we got divided by 3. 2 into 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. So we got 1 over 3. Do keep in mind that we always remove fractions before writing them into square brackets or circular brackets so we'll remove that fraction after we got all of those all indices okay k prime equals 2 into k k is 1 minus h h is 1 again divided by 3 so we will get 2 minus 1 which is 1 so in numerator and we'll get 1 over 3 again here okay so i is equals to ouch i don't know if you can listen to the dramas that my parents are watching right now <laughs> okay so negative of h plus k h prime plus k prime so we got 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 all right so we got you take lcm or simply since there are 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 there are 2 1 of 3 so it will become 2 by 3 okay so minus 2 by 3 is the i index i prime index and we don't know that l equals to l prime so we got l prime equals to negative 1 now let me write these in proper notation prime a prime 
do let me know if you need any online classes because I give paid online classes. So I Prime and L Prime and I give classes on all physics subjects okay and mathematics subjects as well because I have a good grip on both subjects so H prime is oh, 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 oh we have to do one more thing as I told earlier we have to remove fraction so let me write all these indices in order first this is 1 over 3 for a1 1 over 3 for a2 minus 2 by 3 for a3 and then minus 1 for z direction we have to re uh, remove fraction and that could be done by multiplying all these indices by a suitable uh, digit and that suitable digit is obtained by taking the LCM we know we can see here that we have uh, three in the denominators okay all of them are three so LCM of three three and three is again three so multiplying all these indices by three multiplying by three here multiplying by three here multiplying and that multiplication should be with a positive number you cannot multiply a negative number okay so it will be wrong multiplying all these indices with 3 so these 3 cancels out we are left with 1 here positive 1 this 3 and this 3 cancels out we are left with 1 again then this 3 this 3 cancels out we get negative 2 that I am writing as 2 with a bar on it but you can write my minus 2 as it is and minus 1 into 3 is minus 3 so here we go and the final indices are 1 1 2 bar and 3 bar yes okay and yes these are the miller brevis indices for a b direction all right now let us find out the miller brevis indices uh, and miller indices for b c direction and for b c direction we have an advantage that we know the coordinates of b point and coordinates of c point is super duper easy okay um, because c point corresponds to negative a a1 direction and it's super easy to find out the coordinates all right now let's do that so that the directions in figure one are sorted then we'll do it for figure two and then we'll do it for figure three now let's consider the bc direction for bc direction as i told you people earlier that tail is at first point and head will be at second point so tail will be at point b and head will be at point c in that case okay don't mix it with a b in a b b was head while in case of b c b is the tail and now uh, the head coordinates here i write them here and the tail coordinates i write them here ouch Let me make some blocks for A1. This is for A2. And the last one will be for Z. Okay. A1, A3 will be neglected. A, B, A1, A3, I'm really sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, this is for A1, A2, and Z. All right, now uh, it's time to write the coordinates and for point B, which is tail, okay, point B, you can write it as here, point B is tail and point C is head. Uh, writing the tail coordinates first, starting from origin, 
you have to move only one unit along the a1 direction to the other corner of the unit cell to reach the point b so a1 motion was one only no motion along a2 and z direction was needed that is why i took 0 0 as their coordinates and it will be one for a1 and now for c point starting from region what motion is needed that is super easy to see that it's like negative uh, one unit along a1 direction or one unit motion along negative a1 direction and as I told you one unit is always taken if you move from one corner to the other corner of the unit cell along axis directions only okay not um, along other directions but along axis direction if we move from one corner to other corner then it's taken as one for example if you uh, <laughs> start taking that for example this corner and starting from this to this this corner to this this is not one okay this is not one only axis direction motions are considered as one from one point to another so yeah this is minus one motion along a1 direction along a2 and z you do not have to move at all so these are the head and tail coordinates now what we have to do is to subtract the head coordinates uh, with the to tail coordinates so it's like head coordinates minus tail coordinates now this is the operation to perform and next we have to subtract them oh if i will remove them then how i will know that yeah um maybe i can okay this is something that we'll do now and head minus tail coordinates thing now here we'll do it for a1 here we'll do it for a2 and here we'll do it for z okay for a1 head coordinates minus tail coordinates this is the head coordinate and this one is the tail coordinate head is minus one so it will be written first because the order is like that head coordinate minus from formula into tail coordinate tail is one minus one minus one is equals to minus two now for a2 head coordinate which is zero minus tail coordinate which is 0 again so 0 minus 0 which is 0 again so 0 is final result similarly for z 0 minus 0 which is 0 again and we got 2 bar since no fraction involved so these are the final indices 2 bar 0 0 as the final indices and what else you can do is to divide by a whole integer for example we can divide all of these indices um, here but this is true indices miller indices for a bc direction but one more index is possible for if you divide all of these indices by two then we can get we can reduce it okay if you divide them so you will get one here 0 and 0 and in that way you will get 1 bar 0 0 as the Miller indices um, Miller indices of the BC direction so as we know about the concept of family of uh, directions these are two equivalent directions and 3 bar 0 0 4 bar 0 0 all of these directions will point in the same you know that they these all Miller indices corresponds to a similar direction and in that way we have calculated the Miller indices for this direction and after putting 
the values into the formulas that I mentioned before, we can get the Miller Previs indices for BC direction. Let us do it now. So here you can reduce the indices to a lowest integer by dividing it with a suitable digit so that the fraction doesn't um, appear. Okay, as dividing by two doesn't introduced any fraction that is why we can reduce it further and what we got are the final Miller indices now let's find out the Miller Bravis indices and yeah you know the Miller indices for the PC direction we need to calculate Miller Bravis indices right now and for that purpose I already mentioned these conversion equations these conversion equations will be used to find our Miller Bravis indices for directions such that we know the Miller indices HK and L. And this is the easiest way to find our Miller Bravis indices. The other methods are complex and unconventional. That is why uh, I'm using this method where we are using um, Miller indices as a pathway towards Miller Bravis indices. So here we can see that h is equals to the reduced one as i told you people that we can reduce miller indices for directions to the least integer okay by dividing them with a suitable number so that no fraction appears and besides that for planes you cannot do that uh, for planes diff uh, 200 zero zero, for example is a different plane and 100 zero zero is a different plane because there is involvement of um, the position of atoms for example in case of planes as you can see in BCC structure uh, 200100 zero 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 will not correspond to uh, same plane because the atomic arrangement will be different on both of these planes so situation gets different in case of planes while in case of directions you can reduce them and L equals 0 these are the H, K and L values and using these values we can easily convert so as 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 I already shown you people the formula so I'm directly putting the values into the formula which says that h prime equals 2h minus k uh, divided by 3 so 2 into h h is minus 1 minus k k is 0 divided by this whole thing divided by 3 This is equals to uh, 2 into minus 1 is minus 2. So minus 2 minus 0 is again minus 2. So minus 2 divided by 3 um, is the value that we have got so far. But we can see here that it involves fraction and that fraction needs to be removed at the end. So first of all, we first um first of all we have to calculate these uh, values and after that we will multiply it with suitable digits so that the fraction gets removed uh, this is the uh, first value h prime so far uh, for this direction is minus 2 by 3 okay now let's find k prime and for k prime uh, the situation just becomes like that k prime would be equals to 2 into k k is 0 so i am replacing minus 1 by k okay because both of these formulas are almost similar okay wait yes now so k prime was equals to 2k minus h so 2k k is 0 okay minus by formula into h h is minus 1 okay this quantity becomes 0 as whole because 2 multiplied by 0 is 0 
and this minus this minus can uh, multiplies with this minus to become plus okay minus minus equals plus so 1 by 3 is something that we got and k prime is equals to 1 by 3 I prime is calculated by inserting the value of H prime and K prime. So let us do this. H prime is minus 2 by 3 plus K prime which is 1 by 3. Okay. We will take LCM and after taking LCM I am writing the next step here so after taking lcm lcm is 3 obviously and we got minus 2 plus 1 in the numerator i hope you people know how to you know take lcm and reduce the summation of fractions so minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 so minus that is already uh, outside the equation and into minus 1 by 3 and this these two minus 1 uh, these two minus multiplies together to form plus so 1 by 3 is the expression for i prime here okay so we got 1 by 3 And L equals L prime and in that reference we knew, we know that L equals 0 so L prime would be equals to 0 all right and now what we have to do is to multiply these numbers with suitable digits so that the fraction gets removed and for that purpose let me first write all of these numbers together okay, L prime is equals to 0 so we can see that the LCM of denominator in denominator we have only uh, same digit which is 333 three, three. So LCM of 3, 3 and 3 is again 3. So we'll multiply uh, each of these indices with the LCM of denominators. And I'm multiplying it like that. Okay. So we will multiply with 3 to remove fraction because fractional indices doesn't exist in principle. And... Here we go these threes in numerator and denominator cancels out okay and this multiplication will result zero again so the final indices um, are okay the final indices are uh, first is minus 2 this is h prime so it's 2 bar okay then we have k prime which is 1 because 1 is left and 2 bar 1 then 1 again because 3 in the denominator was cancelled out and l prime is equal to 0 because 0 multiplied by 3 is again 0 so yeah these are the final indices for bc direction miller bravis indices sorry these are the final miller bravis indices for um direction bc so in figure one we have found miller indices as well as miller bravis indices for um a b and b c direction these are miller indices and these are miller bravis indices for bc direction okay so now let's do the next problem here we go we can see here uh, the two directions 
वन इज डी डी ई ओके आई होप दिस इज डी ई डायरेक्शन एंड देन वी हैव ई एफ डायरेक्शन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वील डू इट फॉर डी ई एंड देन वील डू इट फॉर डी एफ सो लेट्स डू इट फॉर डी ई फर्स्ट एंड फ्रॉम द स्टेप्स दर हैव टोल्ड यू पीपल द फर्स्ट स्टेप इज टू डिफाइन द कोडिनेट सिस्टम एंड इट विल हेल्प अस टू गेट क्लियर विद अर डेस्टिनेशन एंड this is the first corner and they have also shown these vectors which are showing that they corresponds to the axis vectors so this corner corresponds to um positive a1 axis then leaving the other corner untouched this is the other corner this leaving this corner untouched the next co corner the next corner in order is this one uh, and unit vector is also shown here so from origin this is this center most point is origin making a straight vector through this uh, corner gives us the positive a2 direction okay this rule is applicable for drawing the positive directions and once the positive directions are defined we can easily find out the neg negative directions so you uh, i hope you can see my cursor here i am rotating it on the second corner uh, the next corner to the third corner the point f is somewhere here okay and then the fifth corner is here and this is the sixth corner so this is next corner and we may draw a linear vector like that and this is the a3 direction positive a3 direction though though we are not interested in a3 direction at all while finding out indices formula or oh sorry indices for direction as i told you people that you have to neglect a3 axis motion but you should know where the a3 axis motion is lying um if you don't know the direction maybe you may mistake in finding out the coordinates of tail and head and you may mistakenly move along the a3 direction because you don't know where the a3 direction is so you should know where the a3 direction is that is why i uh, drawn it now draw the negative directions and for negative directions we will draw vectors just opposite to each other this is uh, the corner for positive a1 direction and this corner uh, just opposite to the positive corner is the negative corner and this vector will corresponds to negative a1 direction okay and this is negative a2 direction and a vector like that just straight upward is obviously the z axis um okay this is z direction now let us uh, now let us find out the head and tail coordinates for de direction and first we'll find out miller indices for it and then we'll find out its miller previs indices as we know the transformation equation look like that okay so we can see here that where is head which point is head and which point is tail so as i told you people the in direction de the first point is for tail and head it as uh, and head is at the second point which is point e head will be at point e okay and tail will be at point d now we need to calculate their coordinates and we need to calculate the head coordinates and tail coordinates so for tail first tail is at point d this is the point d so yes this is the point d 
coordinates means that which movement along the axis directions is needed to reach that point okay um, and the axis directions that we are considering are a1 a2 and z directions only a3 direction is neglected coordinates for tail here is the origin there is a very simple pathway and this pathway is very similar to what we have done for the AB direction uh, before. So starting from origin, moving just along the negative A2 direction and we have moved one unit only means to the other corner of the unit cell. So we move one unit along the other corner of the unit cell in a straight line along negative A2 direction. So we reach that point and after that we move vertically upward one unit which means to the other corner of the unit cell and we reach the point D. So we moved along A2 direction and Z direction um, and we reached the point D. So no motion along A1 was needed. So the uh, A1 coordinate is 0. For A2 coordinates, it is since motion is done in negative direction, so it is taken as minus 1 uh, and 1 unit is taken the one numerical value is taken because the motion is done towards the other corner of the unit cell along the axis direction and along z axis we moved positive uh, one unit so 0 minus 1 and 1 are the tail coordinates so we have found the tail coordinates now let's find out the head coordinates and a2 and Z. In A1 direction we moved a positive one unit only okay and we reached the point E. Point E is at this point and this point corresponds to negative A1 direction and from origin to the other corner of the unit cell that is why one numerical value was taken and no motion around A2 and Z direction is needed that is why uh, they are taken like that. If you uh, notice then the DE direction is similar to the AB direction as I can clearly see now we have calculated as we have calculated the head coordinates and tail coordinates the blue coordinates are for tail and these orange ones are for head now we have to subtract okay, head coordinates minus tail coordinates as we have calculated the coordinates for head and tail now we have to subtract them and the order of subtraction would would look like that uh, the head coordinate head coordinate minus tail coordinate so the head coordinate will come first and will be subtracted from the tail coordinate okay so this is the operation to perform and we'll do it for a1 coordinates separately, A2 coordinates separately and Z coordinates separately ok and yeah so uh, head minus tail so 1 is from head and 0 is from tail for A1 so 1 minus 0 will be the operation 1 minus 0 is equals to 1 so 1 will be the final result for A2 head coordinate is 0 and tail coordinate is minus 1 so 0 it will look like that 0 minus this is head coordinate and minus tail coordinate tail coordinate is minus 1 so these two minus multiply with each other to give plus ok so minus minus equals plus this is the basic uh, algebraic operation so 1 is the final result and for uh, z we have head coordinate 0 and tail coordinate 1 so head minus tail 0 minus 1 is equals to minus 1 ok it's it look like that ok 0 minus 1 so minus 1 is the result and we got 1 1 minus 1 as the indices for uh, DE direction Miller indices for DE direction so 1 1 and minus 1 which is represented by putting a bar over the number enclosed in square brackets 
so these are the miller indices of de direction and now we will calculate the miller brevis indices for de direction using these transformation equations that i mentioned earlier here h is 1 k is 1 and l is minus 1 so we can see here l prime is equals to l which is equals to minus 1 so this doesn't change and we got the last coordinate value easily now let's put the values in this expression and we got h prime is equals to h and k values are similar, equal so that doesn't bring any change 2 into 1 minus 1 because h and k as we saw were both 1 that is equals to 2 into 1 is 2 2 minus 1 in numerator divided by 3 2 minus 1 is equals to 1 so 1 divided by 3 is the final result now k prime this uh, will these two quantities will be equal for obvious reason that k and h are equal to each other so 2 into 1 is 2 again 2 minus 1 is 1 so 1 by 3 is k prime okay now putting values into this expression for i prime h prime is 1 by 3 and k prime is again 1 by 3 and uh, 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 is equals to 2 by 3 and minus it's outside the bracket so that remains we got 1 by 3 1 by 3 minus 2 by 3 and minus 1 as the indices and we have to remove the fraction so the fraction should be removed and let us do that we got one by three one by three and minus two by three and last one is minus one okay so multiplying with three multiplying each of these by three because fraction needs to be removed LCM of denominator was 3 that is why we are multiplying each index with 3 and these 3 cancels out one is left for h prime this 3 this 3 cancels out again one is left for k prime this 3, this 3 cancels out, 2 bar is left for i prime and 3 into minus 1 is minus 3 so 3 bar is left for l prime and these will be enclosed in um, square brackets to, re to represent the miller brevis synthesis with no spaces in between and okay these are the miller brevis indices for the de direction now let's move towards the ef direction and i would love to mention one thing here that for planes as we saw that we chose this point um, as origin okay this point as origin as you can see uh, the one i'm showing you uh, because of the problem with the origin down at the uh, basal plane as it was passing through the plane okay it was a point on the plane also and that was not uh, allowed in our rules that we have established uh, in order to find our middle indices for the planes hence uh, we chose this point this above point on the roof plane 
as origin and but for directions i chose the origin on the basal plane so some of you might uh, get confused on the fact that maybe uh, it's not right because uh, we chose the another one origin for the plane and now we are choosing another origin for the direction so i would love to mention that one thing that the choice of origin in case of directions is arbitrary you can choose any point uh, as suitable a region that you find easy and um, more convenient in finding out the indices for directions any point could be taken as a region there is no restriction on the selection of a region in case of directions but for planes you have to make sure that the region uh, doesn't pass through the plane or the region is not a uh, is not a common point to the plane means plane doesn't contain origin and these are some similar statements um, so if you take point c as the origin uh, as i uh, did it myself also uh, the indices of directions that we get for a b uh, for example are similar to what we get for uh, what we get when we take this point in the base as a region because the direction is uh, same in both cases okay selection of region doesn't affect it in some cases but the change of selection of region changes the final values for miller indices for example but those miller indices are equally valid and they will be correct okay so do not confuse here if your Miller indices are different uh, from the other student who chose another point as a region, that that's okay if your method is correct. Okay, so that's not an issue at all. In the problem solution, I chose this point in the basal region as origin, uh, which is you know conventional point to uh, take as origin because I was going to take this origin as. Uh, in figure one also in figure two and figure three uh, the point for origin will remain the same for me so that is why to create some you know similarity in procedure i chose similar origin on all of these figures and uh, that's the only reason you can choose some other origin like on the roof plane or something like that and solve it accordingly the steps that i have described okay follow those procedures and you will get your answer yeah that was a point worth mentioning and let's jump into the part where i was uh, at and i thought of this uh, thing this uh, important point later in the video and i thought to record it because it's worth mentioning because i too got confused but uh, you should know that there is no issue when you are finding out you know indices for planes as well as directions there is no unique origin okay you can choose any origin such that uh, for example in case of planes as i told you people the one thing that you have to keep in mind uh, while in case of directions there is no restriction at all choose any point as a region that you feel is more convenient or something like that now let's find um indices for the EF direction and if you have any confusion you can ask me in question in comment section or you, you can email me simply and there is a good news I also have started giving online services on Fiverr so you can uh, contact me there if you feel easy and more uh, you know, safe there and additionally you can uh, ask me for services paid services as well as unpaid services if you can't afford so yes basically my channel was aimed to help students and money is not the priority let's start we have to calculate indices for ef direction you can see here we have this point this point as f okay 
and this point as E. In EF direction, would you please tell me what is tail and what is head? Okay. So we have EF direction. And in EF direction, we have the first point in order is tail always, okay. Is tail while the second point in order is head. Now we need to calculate the coordinates for head and tail. Okay, so here will be the tail coordinates, and here will be the head coordinates. So I needed to write H here. That's H. Okay, and the coordinates will be for the three axes, which are A1, A2, and A3. A1, A2, and Z. Okay. All right. For tail point E, it's really, uh, really, really, it's very simple. For a point E, we already have calculated it for the DE di uh, direction. Uh, its coordinate are. Uh, one unit along positive a1 direction okay zero unit along uh, a2 and zero unit along a uh, z direction so these are the final coordinates for tail and for head we have head at point f and point f you can see which axis line is passing through point f it is a2 congratulations it's super easy also and we can see here that only motion along A2 direction, which is positive A2 direction is needed. Hence, to reach point F from a region, you have to travel one unit along A2 direction and no motion along A1 and Z direction. So, these are the final coordinates. Now, we need to calculate head minus tail. Head minus, um, I mean, minus tail. So that is something that we have to calculate now and we have to do it for all three coordinates separately. That's super easy. You can write this statement. Okay. Now subtracting uh, tail from head. Okay. Or you can simply write this operation, the operation that you are going to perform that is H minus T head minus tail coordinates um, for A1 coordinates in this column i write for a1 coordinates okay in this column i write for a2 coordinates and for this column i write for z coordinate first in order will be head and the second in order will be tail so this is a1 coordinate for head which is 0 and this is the tail coordinate which is 1 so head minus tail means 0 minus 1 here and hence will be left with minus 1 as the final result so for a1 we got minus 1 and for a2 we have head minus tail it is 1 in head minus 0 1 minus 0 is 1 again um, yeah and for z coordinate 0 minus 0 which is super easy 0 and since there is no fraction involved that is why these are the final Miller indices for EF direction and you can see how easy uh, this is uh, but you should know the method okay and the steps and you can 
find formula and distance of any direction that comes to you it becomes super easy when you know the general method the general method is the one that is applicable to all the cases that comes to you and this method i have described to you people is applicable in every case that comes to you so there is no issue at all yeah these are the miller indices this is h this is k and this is l okay and a bar on a number which is negative these are the miller indices now we'll use these transformation equation conversion equations to convert or to find out miller previous indices uh, when we know the miller indices okay uh, so um, we know the miller indices right the miller indices that we got was 1 bar 1 and 0 h is minus 1 k is 1 and uh, l is 0 so by looking in the uh, by looking at the miller indices we can easily find out what will be l prime it will be equal to 0 okay now let's calculate h prime for h prime let me choose some other color to differentiate he <laughs> and h prime equals to into h h is minus 1 so putting here minus 1 into a uh, minus k um k is 1 okay closing the bigger bracket let me make it as square bracket so that we may know which bracket is where and we are not e two into minus one is minus two minus one divided by three okay and we got minus three by three and we are left with minus 1 okay finally so h prime is equals to minus 1 here all right now let's calculate k prime and for k prime 2 i am not using the bigger bracket because it's a lot of no use okay um it doesn't make anything easier Uh, k is one, so positive one. You can see the formula. Okay, so formulas are super duper easy. H is minus one, so using bracket. Always use brackets when a negative terms, for example, comes, or a term with multiple numbers in it comes. Multiple numbers mean uh, there are multiple operations. perform between different terms in an expression for example if 2x plus 3 comes then you have to use bracket and multiply accordingly it's always better to use brackets when the length here terms come until unless you get comfortable and practiced enough to predict values 2 into 1 is 2 and minus 1 In minus into minus is plus, so this becomes plus one divided by three, and we can see what's coming three by three. I'm writing here, okay, three by three, cancelling three by a three, and this three we got one. So k prime is finally one. All right, that's good. Um, removing the extra thing so that we may focus on what's important. Right, all right, all right. So I prime, we can see that 
I prime ouch I prime equals H prime plus K prime H prime is minus 1 plus K prime which is 1 this is equals to 0 In this way, we got the Miller Bravis indices for E, F direction, which are H prime, which is minus 1, K prime, which is 1, and I, which is 0, and L, which is also 0. And let us write them together. Okay. It's 1 bar. Since no fraction is involved, that is why these are the final indices. And yes. Okay, these are the final miller bravis indices for EF direction. Now, let's see the figure 3, which is the final figure in which we need to find out the uh, indi indices for direction GO, GO, <laughs> and OK, OK, uh, don't go, OK, you don't uh, need to go, <laughs> I'm not asking you people to go, um, but <laughs> it's just a lame joke. <laughs> You know, I am the most organic in this channel, okay? I am an introvert kind of person and I am not open to anybody. I never talked like that to anybody else, okay? And I feel confident and free when I am on my channel. That's the most comfortable place for me ever where I can express myself in a whole way and all the things that I do here are all organic and natural don't consider it as to be uh, you know uh, attempt to get some attention no that's not a case what you are seeing on my channel is me the original me not 100% because I'm still you know trying to recollect myself and recognize myself what I am actually but you know what kind of humor I have what kind of abilities and potential I have still on my journey towards recognizing myself and my worth that's the toughest thing you know leave it so let's go for go for finding the miller indices for go which is yes g you know here tail is at g and head at o oh oh tail and this is head okay now let's find out the head and tail coordinates Here we will write for A1, A2, Z, A1, A2, and Z. Alright, now let's find out the coordinates and before that we should know what our coordinate system looks like. This is or a1 okay the lovely a1 leaving this corner this is the cute little a2 okay and this is the highest one <laughs> z axis okay and maybe we should know the a3 axis because we should know what we can't do There is a quote by um, Thomas Edison, I think. He said that I tried maybe thousand times and I failed. And one thing that I learned was what are the ways in which a bulb couldn't be formed. Okay. So we should know what will not work. Okay. 
that's an addition to knowledge that's something that adds to a knowledge also it's not something useless that's something informative that this way will not work for us we should know those ways that couldn't produce a certain result and that was a very intellectual perspective and very positive perspective towards failures because failures tells us that what are the shortcomings and what things will not work for us i'm currently trying for some scholarships and i have failed many some of them were succeeded but they were not what i wanted failure is a very tough pill to swallow <laughs> really okay 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 i'm discussing this thing with you people because i know uh, those who are watching my channel are all students and they may have achieved something they were longing for a very long time or they are struggling still struggling like me so keep yourself motivated one day the things will work out okay the things will get the way you want it or me you may accept the things as they are so never lose hope that's the free passion <laughs> lecture that i am giving <laughs> you people so sorry um okay now let's talk about g um yes so this is the negative a2 direction all right this was the a2 positive and this is negative a2 okay so to reach at point g what are the possible pathways what are the possible pathways that can help us reach the point g oh i have to think about it if i reach here you can see one thing here okay that you can see that let me choose some other color to clarify this thing some highlighter maybe guys um blue okay this direction you can see okay this direction is a1 direction now this is a1 direction okay they are they are parallel to each other this one is also a1 direction you can see that these two lines are parallel to each other and this direction is also along a1 direction so if you move along this line then it means you are moving along a1 direction all right i clarified this thing because you will see that why i did it now i think i should use highlighter again so that you may know the path i am following okay so starting from origin we need to calculate the coordinates of point g that is why i am mentioning these things so coordinates of point g means that how much we have to move along the a1 a2 and z axis to reach the point g ignoring the a3 motions okay we can't move along a3 directions so starting from origin i'll move minus 1 unit in a2 direction okay so i moved in negative a2 direction by one unit which means to the other corner of the unit cell this is the corner and now i will move vertically upward because i want to reach point g and i have to follow that road okay i move one unit along positive one unit along the positive z direction so i can see here um what motions i am taking and then to reach point g which is here i'll move along now if i am moving in this direction 
then it's positive a a one direction. And if I moving in this direction, then it is negative a one direction. Okay. So to reach point G, I have to move in this direction. Okay. In this direction. So I'm moving along negative a one direction. So it is negative one unit motion along in negative a one direction. I'm moving one unit to the other corner of the unit cell. So the final coordinates which are uh, clearly evident here that in a1 direction I move minus 1 unit in a2 direction we use, we moved minus 1 units also in z direction we move 1 unit so these are the tail coordinates now let's find out the head coordinates oh my god we have head at point O okay and point O is a region and at region the coordinates are automatically 0 0 and 0 this is super easy okay if you have chosen some other origin for example this then you would have deprived yourself from this convenience <laughs> okay uh, that's not tough if you cho chose that origin that's not tough at all but I was just uh, you know just saying it that's not tough at all even in the other case so let's uh, do this thing that head minus tail coordinates all right so we have we'll do it separately for all the coordinates here I'll write for a1 in second block I'll write for a2 in third block I'll write for a3 oh sorry z z no a3 a3 is banned I'll use that steady um, marker. You can see how oh. head minus tail. Head is zero. Okay, so it's like zero minus into minus one because tail coordinate is minus one. So these two minus multiply with each other to give us plus one. Okay so h is 1 now for a2 0 minus into minus 1 again the same thing so we'll get 1 as a result and for z we'll do 0 minus 1 0 minus 1 is minus 1 okay 0 minus 1 is equals to minus 1 it's just like as if 0 is nothing there ULF is minus 1 as a result and we have uh, the Miller indices of go as 1 1 1 bar okay this is the direction now for ok now we need to calculate for ok and this k point is just at the middle okay it's just at the middle let me remove some points here because we'll clarify It's now O O K direct, uh, direction with tail at O and head at K. Tail coordinates are evidently 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. These are commas, okay? If you are thinking that what I am writing here, these are pretty little commas and head coordinate at point k this point this is just at the middle of this whole length line this whole line now let's see what motions are needed to reach that point okay and remember that we can't move along a3 direction you can see uh, that this point is positive a3 so the point just opposite to this is this one and this is negative a3 axis so we can't move along this line and reach there okay this is not permissible we can't move like that 
because it involves a motion along a three direction which is not permissible here now let's use that golden color and reach the point k without moving along a3 so what we'll do is move along positive a2 direction this time by one unit because we move to the other corner of the unit cell along the axis direction and then i i told you people that this is and this is this is a1 direction if you move from this to this direction then it is positive a1 direction and if you move from this point to this way you know then it is negative a1 direction so now you can see what's the case we moved one unit along positive a2 direction and then from this towards the positive a1 direction half unit because this is the whole length and we just move half the distance so it is half motion along the a1 direction okay this is clearly half there is, there is no room to confusion and yes this is half along a1 direction so the coordinates are along a1 we moved half along a2 we move one unit along z we do not have to move at all now head minus tail coordinates it's 1 by 2 minus 0 which is 1 by 2 again then uh, 1 minus 0 which is 1 0 minus 0 which is 0 these are the coordinates subtraction because fraction is involved we have to remove the fraction lcm of denominated in denominate denominator we have 2 as the only candidate and lcm of 2 is simply 2 we'll multiply each of the these index with 2 so multiplying with multiplying with 0 with result 0 again that is why i'm now writing it here as you people already know and 2 divided by 2 is 1 so we are left with 1 here and multiplying with 1 multiplying 2 with 1 gives 2 that is why I already I directly wrote 2 and 0 these are the Miller indices for OK direction and this is the final notation for the Miller indices of OK direction and I've calculated Miller indices of G, O, and OK uh, here, and you can easily, very easily calculate the Miller Bravis indices for G, O, and OK direction by using these uh, transformation equations. That's super easy. I hope you people can do that. I'm doing it for OK direction. We have H, K, and L, 1, 2, 0. So 1, 2, 0 was the final result. And One, two, zero. <laughs> H is one, K is two, and L is zero. So we know the value of L already now. It's zero. Now for H prime, let's do that. H prime equals two into h which is uh, 1 minus k which is 2 divided by 3 and we got 2 minus 2 in numerator which is equals to 0 0 by 3 is 0 so 0 is the h prime index 2 into k k is 2 minus h h is 1 divided by 3 2 into 2 is 4 4 minus 1 is 3 3 divided by 3 is 1 so you get 1 here for i prime this is equals to negative of h prime plus k prime h prime is 0 plus k prime is 1 so you get minus 1 as a result these are the Miller-Bravis indices for OK direction. 
let me write them in order it is 0 1 1 bar 0 okay so these are the Miller brevis indices for ok direction and I hope you people like that video it was a very good example where we calculated Miller brevis indices for Miller brevis indices as well as Miller indices for a variety of directions and yeah that's it for that video like share and subscribe and do share with other people that you might I uh, think that it it's you know useful for them to watch support me as much as possible and thank you so much you can contact me for any queries yeah thank you goodbye